Hi guys, here's your video on 1.9 inverse functions. Um, at the end of this video, you should be able to find the inverse of a function as well as verify that functions are inverses. So first of all, what is an inverse function? An inverse function will basically undo another function. So similar to how addition and subtraction undo each other, um, we have these two functions that could possibly undo each other. So for the first example, we are verifying that these two functions are inverses. In order to verify that a function is an inverse of another function, you have two options. You can take the composition as f of g of x, and you're trying to see if that equals x. Or you can go in the opposite direction, g of f of x, and see if that equals x. Now it doesn't matter which one, uh, which direction you go in, um, but we're just gonna take the composition. So I am actually going to do g of f of x. So I'm gonna do this one, whoops. So g of f of x, I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite like this. And then, so f of x is x minus nine over four. So what I really want to do is I want to do g of x minus 9 over 4. So now where I see my x and my g function right here, I'm going to replace it with that x minus 9 over 4. So let's see, I have 4 times x minus 9 over 4 uh, plus 9. And then I want to simplify this expression and see if it equals x. So right now I am multiplying by 4 as well as dividing by 4, which means those two 4s are going to cancel. That leaves me with x minus 9 plus 9, which is x. So since my composition actually equals x, that means yes, these two functions are inverses of each other. Now it has to equal x when you take the composition. If it equals negative x, if it equals x plus two, they are not inverses, okay? So once you take the composition, um, as long as it equals x, you can go ahead and say they are inverses of each other. All right, so my second example is actually finding the inverse. So in order to find the inverse of a function, you're gonna follow these four steps over here. So your first step is to change f of x to y. So I'm gonna rewrite this as y equals five x minus seven. Your second step is to switch the x and the y. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, instead of having y equals, I'm now gonna have x equals five y minus seven. And then from here, step three says to solve for y. So now I'm gonna get this y by itself. So I'm gonna add seven to both sides. That gives me x plus seven equals five y. And then to get y by itself, I'm gonna divide both sides by five. So now I have y equals x plus seven over five. And my last step is to change it back to function notation. So I'm gonna change my y to f inverse of x. So f inverse has that negative one right next to your f, and that denotes the inverse instead of it just being a regular function. And there you go. And that is the inverse of our original function. All right, let's do another one. So step number one, change f of x to y. In this case, it is g of x, um, but we're gonna do the same thing. So I have y equals two x squared plus nine. Step one, done. Step two, switch your x and your y. So where I saw an x, I changed it to a y, and where I saw a y, I changed it to an x. Step number three, solve for y. So I'm gonna go ahead and subtract nine from both sides. That gives me x minus nine equals two y squared. Um, from there, I'm gonna divide both sides by two. So I have x minus nine over two equals y squared. And then to undo a square, I'm gonna square root. 
So now I have y equals the square root of x minus 9 over 2. And my last step is to change y to f inverse of x. So now I'm going to rewrite this as, oh, g inverse, since it was a g function. So g inverse of x equals the square root of x minus 9 over 2. All right, so let's find the inverse of another function. Okay, so step number one, change f of x to y. So in this case, we have h of x. So I'm going to write this as y equals 2x minus 3 over 5x plus 1. Step two, switch x and y. So now I have x equals to y minus 3 over 5y plus 1. Now as you can see with this particular example, it is a little bit more complicated because now when we're solving for y, we actually have two y's in different spots here. So this one's going to be a little bit of a process. So what I have going on right now, right now is, an, is a rational function. And what I have is I have this y in the denominator, which is not going to really help me solve it until I get it out of the denominator. So what I'm going to do is I am going to multiply both sides by 5y plus 1. As I do that, these two cancel. So now I have... 2y minus 3 on my right, and on my left, I can go ahead and distribute this x into that parenthesis, so I have 5xy plus 1. Okay, now we have a 5xy, so we have an x and a y together, which looks scary, um, but it's really not. Oh, I forgot my x right here. There we go. So 5xy plus 1x equals 2y minus 3. Now keep in mind, we are trying to solve for y. So what I want to do is I want to get my y's on the same side. So my next step is going to be to subtract 2y from both sides. So that's going to put my y's on the same side. So now I have 5xy oops, minus 2y plus 1x equals negative 3. Now I only want y's on one side and I want everything else on the other side. So now I am going to move this x to the other side. So I just have my y terms over here. So 5xy minus 2y equals negative x minus 3. Okay. So now if I look, I have my y's on one side, everything else on the other. I'm going to go ahead and continue this over here because clearly I ran out of space. So let me rewrite it. So I have 5xy minus 2y equals negative x minus 3. Now if you notice these two terms, they have a y in common. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out that y. Oh, wrong color. So when I take out the y from 5xy, that leaves me with 5x. When I take out the y from negative 2y, that leaves me with minus 2 equals negative x minus 3. So originally, we had two y's that were separated. And because of factoring, we now have a single y. So our y is being multiplied by 5x minus 2. So how do you undo multiplication? You divide. So now I'm going to divide both sides by 5x minus 2. These two are going to cancel. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my expression, y equals. If you'll notice, we finally got that y by itself negative x minus 3 over 5x minus 2. So as you can see, the process is a little bit longer and does involve a little bit of factoring. But just to reiterate, what you were trying to do is you were trying to get to this point right here, where you have your y terms on one side and then all of your other terms on the other side. That allowed us to factor out the y so that we get it down to just one y instead of having two separate y's. 
All right, time for the last step. So step four says to change y back to a uh, function notation. So this was h of x. So I'm going to write this as h inverse of x equals negative x minus 3 all over 5x minus 2. And there is the inverse for this particular problem. And that also concludes the video for this lesson.